Now, normally with projectors, you have to place them on the other side of the room, right? And if someone walks in front of them, they block the image. But not with a model like this here. This was sent out to me from a company called JM Go. It is their O1 model here. Now, this is an ultra short throw projector. And that means that you can place it up very close to a wall. And only 10 inches will then allow us to project up to 100 inches. And then, of course, you don't have to worry about people walking in front of the projection. You can even sit in front of the image and you're not going to be blocking it like you would a standard normal projector. The good thing about this is you don't need, of course, a huge room to be able to take advantage of that really large screen size. So this is the O1 model, one of two. There will be the O1 Pro. This is the lower end model. It's going to be for sale on Indiegogo. And I've sent it out to me to review here this unit. So it does have an LED projector within this. It's full HD, the resolution. It can handle 4K, but it will scale the 4K down to 1080p, of course. And the maximum output of this one is 800 ANSI lumens. Inside the box, you will find our power supply. We have a quick start guide and the remote here. So it's similar to an Android TV remote, the layout of it. So this is the directional pad here. OK's in the middle. We've got our home menu, back keys, settings, volume up and down. There's a switch on the side for the focus adjustment. Up the top here is the microphone button for Alexa. And this is to power it on and off. So this is a Bluetooth remote and it does take two AAA batteries. Looking at the top of our projector here, so we have a power on button, status LED, this part is plastic, glass over where the projector is, the lens is behind that of course. So this one is LED, 1080p, and it does have 800 ANSI lumens. Now right here is a camera for the autofocus, it has keystone correction too as well with this, auto keystone correction and some other sensors to either side of this. So this part here at the back that's made out of alloy has a matte paint job to it. And overall the build quality is good of this projector. On the underside here we have some rubber feet at the front of it and then a large rear one and a mounting point here for a tripod. This here is a vent, so it is fan cool, just like the other LED projectors that I've reviewed here in the channel. And then either side is where we have the speaker. So built-in Dyna audio on this, and later on in this in-depth review, I'll give you a sample of them. They do sound very good. And here along the back, we have a LAN port, optical audio, two USB 2 ports, which work with external drives. For example, you can place some movies on that and then play them from that. And we've got HDMI, which supports ARC here and another HDMI. Now, those ports there do support actually 4K, but it then, of course, scales down to 1080p. Both the left and the right is where you'll find the grill here, and inside are those Dyna Audio tuned speakers. Now, this is one of my favorite things about this particular projector, is the ultra short throw ratio. So I have it just 40 centimeters away from the wall here, and it projects out about a proximate 100 inch image, which is excellent. So you don't have to worry about people walking in front of the projector either, and you don't need a large room. You just really need a blank wall, and then you can project the image onto it. Here we are in the OS. So this one has its own OS, which is called Luna OS, which is basically a UI, a skin on top of Android TV version 9. So at the top here in home, popular applications like YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, Netflix is pre-installed. You can see down here Spotify, Facebook, BBC News, various different apps. There's a lot of things that are on this. They have their own app store with this particular projector, but they don't have Google App Store, okay, so Google Play Store isn't on this particular projector at the moment and the time of this video. So if you go right up to the top, we've got different categories there, so applications, video, music, and our settings, which I will jump into now just to have a look at a few things. So it is powered by a quad core from MediaTek with the Mali G52 for its graphics, and performance-wise, it doesn't seem to be laggy, it seems quite quick, and the minimum that we need really to be running Android TV. So it does have a 16 gigabyte ROM and three gigabytes of memory, which is sufficient enough for Android TV. So here we can select our networks, it's pretty self-explanatory there, Bluetooth support of course, the source, so HDMI, HDMI 2, color range, your startup source is a very handy setting to have, so using this, you can select it to always start up with HDMI 1, for example, if you had your Xbox or your PlayStation connected to that. 
that's what you're gonna be using it for, you're able to override that, which is good. Under audio, so we have a few settings there, you can swap over and you can use, of course, the um, optical audio for your source or the equipment and different sound modes there with a Dyna audio, which is very good. And I'll give you a sample of that later on in this video, of course. So there are a few settings in here, you can see that are still in Chinese. So they haven't translated 100% everything yet, but this is basically a beta firmware that I'm using. Eye protection mode, our brightness, and here we have a blue light filter. So that will later be in English, of course. And this is just an early production unit that they sent out to me to review. So keystone correction there, manual keystone correction, trapezoidal correction, de-warping, and a digital zoom autofocus, focus calibration, aspect ratio, and the projector mode, of course, you can swap it over. So if you're gonna be mounting this from a roof upside down, or you're going to, for example, have it uh, aiming upwards, this is where you can change all of those settings there. Under video, a lot of handy settings. So we don't normally get this with projectors, so many options, and I do like to see this. So noise reduction, game mode for improved latency, the input lag there will be improved with that on. So when I game later, I will definitely be turning that on. Motion compensation, HDR, color temperature, so you can adjust that, and wall color calibration options are there too as well, which is good to see. And then just under advanced, fans on automatic, I will give you a sample of it later on after I've used the projector, it has to be on at least running for two hours so you can hear what it sounds like. And system, so there are system upgrades that do come through for this projector. So I'm just gonna take a look here at the background. You can see that it looks very good here and I'm not seeing a lot of noise with the blacks either. Now another projector I reviewed recently, which was the, um, what one was that, the X, X Gimme Halo actually had a bit of noise coming through. A lot of noise with blacks, and I'm not seeing it here. So I'll take a look at one of my videos, and we're gonna have a look at that image quality here, because I have, so far, I mean, I think it's very decent for 1080p, the image quality. The brightness is fine. Of course, I'm in a pitch black room here at the moment. I want to bring up this video and show you a little bit of the YouTube performance here, that the wireless streaming quality is good. Now, of course, we've got an advert. All right, so I just turned that audio down. So a very bright image, and it is, of course, just 1080p max. Now, what about the sharpness? How can I comment on that? Well, I do have the projector really projecting about 100 inches at the moment, and I think it's fine. Now, the closer you get it to the wall, of course, the larger, sorry, the smaller the size of the projection, but it looks a lot sharper then. But even at this range here that I've got it at the moment, projecting about approximate 100 inches, it looks good. And for 1080p, this is definitely acceptable quality. And overall, I think the image quality is good. Now the darkness, the contrast, and the blacks there again on a white wall, acceptable. It is looking a little bit oversaturated, but I'm able to tweak that through the user settings there as well. I can just tone down a little on the contrast that's coming through. Moving over now to our streaming services like Amazon Prime Video and Netflix. Let's go on to Netflix. So I found out that uh, this doesn't have a wide vine level one cert, and that's something that's important for projectors especially, so we can view content that is streamed DRM at full HD, and this is only stuck in standard definition. So let's have a look at some TV shows here. I'll just go through one of my lists, bring that up, and uh, one that's got a lot of blacks in it. Okay, so what has a lot of blacks, dark images? Barbarians, I'll just quickly play this. Even though it's standard definition, and this should be coming through on the video, I would still classify this as just watchable. So I'll get out of this and we'll take a look now at Amazon Prime. So Amazon Prime Video, that will be the same, unfortunately, because it doesn't have the level one cert. So just bring this up. See the mouse cursor there, that's because I've got the keyboard and mouse plugged in. So just bring up something here uh, very, very quickly. So The Expanse, very good TV series. If you're into your sci-fi, this one is a must. Okay, and just resume this. And same story, it starts out looking terrible. I mean, that's like 360p, very, very blocky. And then it starts to improve, it gets a little sharper, but again, only standard definition with this one. And here we have our file manager that's on board. I wanted to check out the video playback performance of some demanding files. So I'll just go into this and some demo clips that I do have. So images look good on this screen. 
that loads up very quick. One of there, my cat Vera. My test sample images. And again, I think, projecting onto a white wall here, that these blacks actually do look pretty good. And I'm happy with those lower noise levels. But what about demanding videos? So here first is the Jellyfish file. Now this one is a 4K, 140 megabit per second file, ATVC. Will it run it? Okay, it is running it, but it's choppy as you can see. Very choppy there, and it doesn't really seem to smooth out. Now I expected this, this is a really demanding file. Audio format is limited. So the codec support, a little bit limited on this one. Uh, you need something like VLC plan to be able to run everything. So I've got a just a standard 4K video clip here that I shot on a Samsung Galaxy Note. And for some reason, it doesn't want to play that. Okay, so that seems to be very slow. No, that just doesn't, it doesn't want to play it there. So the codec support seems a bit limited here for those external files that you may be wanting to run. But what about just HD, HEVC codec? This should be at least playable. So there we go, that one's running just fine and smooth as I'd expected it would, uh, but no audio coming through with it, unfortunately. And what about a super demanding 4K 60 frames per second? It probably won't be able to play this at all, no. That's to be expected. Didn't expect it to be able to run that one at all. And one thing that's really impressed me is the audio quality out of the Dyna Audio with the speakers that are within this. So what I do is play a sample now, 100% volume, and it's powerful, loud audio, but they haven't gone over the top with the tune. It's not way too powerful, the bass, and the trebles aren't over-exaggerated, and mids are good. For inbuilt speakers, I think it sounds excellent and really good volume on it. And onto gaming performance. So this did actually auto detect it and set it to HDMI 2. So that's a 4K input, 4K 60, but of course it's sampling it down then to 1080p. So when you go into the settings, you select uh, the source of course that you want. You can override this. So if you want it to run at a native 1080p HDMI 1.4, so 1080p 60 hertz, then you do that. But I'm gonna test it out here with HDMI 2. I've also enabled just under video, there's the option to set the game mode to improve the input lag. So latency wise, we'll see how it does with this. So I just get out of the menu and it's actually looking pretty good. So right now I have my PlayStation 5 with Final Fantasy 7 Remake here set to the performance mode. So this is 60 frames per second, 1080p. And it looks good. I can happily play like this. Now the PlayStation 5 also did automatically detect it as supporting HDR. So I went through the HDR configuration. Now capturing it on camera right now, very hard to get that dynamic range to come through with a non-HDR camera. It's impossible, of course. So here it's looking good. And very, very smooth here. Input lag here. Okay, good. I can happily game with this. That's not going to be a problem. Not for a, for a game like this at all. So what about the fan noise? All of these projectors, of course, are actively cool. They've got a little fan inside to make sure the LEDs and the components are kept cool. So yes, you do hear it. It's not too offensive, it's not the loudest I've heard. Occasionally it ramps up, but normally it goes right back down the RPMs of the fan. But here is a sample of it now, what it will normally sound like when in use. And let's talk a little bit about the pricing now. I see it's listed on Indiegogo, this model, for the early bird pricing of around 700 US dollars. And what do you get for that? As I've demonstrated, we get, I think, good 1080p image quality. It will accept 4K if you wanted to input 4K into it. Of course, downscaling it. And it does run at 60 hertz. The brightness, 800 ANSI lumens, is looking good. Now, in dark environments, of course, it's going to look its best. On my white wall here, I found the blacks to be decent, and I'm not seeing a lot of noise in blacks like I have seen with other models. For example, like the Xgimi Halo had a lot of noise with the blacks, 1080p projector also. This one is better, the quality coming out of it. Now, impressive speakers in this, really good. The Dyna Audio Tune speakers, I think so far these have to be the most powerful and the best I've heard that are built in a projector. 
and the maximum volume is very, very decent without any distortion. That's the main thing. Nothing vibrates. It's not distorting, clipping or anything like that. No, they're actually very good. Now, it's interesting that they've gone with this design, of course, that is allowing the super ultra short throw. That, I think, is one of the best things about this. And the reason to go for it solely for that, you don't need a huge wide room to be able to take advantage of this projector. In fact, no, you just need really about 10 inches to set this up. You can even go smaller than that. So you can literally have the wall right here and be projecting up to then about say 60 inches. Of course, the more you pull it back, the larger the image, image size. And that means of course, no one's gonna be walking in front of it either. You can even sit right behind the projector and not even worry about blocking it. So that's the best thing there. But what about things that I don't like that need improvements? Okay, as I pointed out, it doesn't have a wide vine level one suit. It's level three, that DRM means that Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Disney Plus and things will be running in standard definition. So we cannot take advantage of the 1080p projection quality this has. So when you watch something like Netflix that I showed you from a demo, I think it's watchable, but of course it's not great quality, only standard definition. So that needs to be improved. There is, at the time of this video at least, on the, what is basically beta firm where I'm testing on this, a little bit of Chinese that they will be fixing, they've told me that's showing up in the UI, and there is no Google Play Store support so far. So if they can fix those really software related things, I think it's a good projector. I really do like it. Now the fan noise is not that bad at all. The speakers, the image quality, good build quality, and the best part, being able to set this just in front of a wall and still enjoy a really large picture size. So thank you so much for watching my review here of the JM Go 01.